Hi, this is Ahmed Alugaili and Manos Brilakis presenting case 249 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This case builds on the theme of recanalizing the native coronary artery CTO in patients who have recurrent saphenous vein graft failure. The patient was an elderly gentleman who had recurrent failure of a saphenous vein graft to the ramus intermedius branch, and he was referred for recanalizing the native left main CTO. This is a coronary angiogram with a bilateral injection. There is a, an occlusion of the left main. There is a saphenous vein graft going to the ramus that already has restenosis and has multiple previous stents. The occlusion is relatively short. There seems to be significant calcification. And again, this is the caudal area caudal projection showing that there is a bifurcation on the distal cap. Specifically, there is the circumflex as well as the ramus branch that was the target for the vein graft. So what we have here is a patient who has a blunt CTO of the left main. The length is relatively short, about 20 millimeters. There is a bifurcation on the distal cap, and the distal vessel is filling through a saphenous vein graft. So given the short length, and given that we knew the location of the proximal cap, our plan was to start with undergrade wiring, and if that didn't work, to go retrograde through the saphenous vein graft. We did not want to use ADR here because of the bifurcation on the distal cap. So we tried to wire using uh, various guide wires, including a Hornet 14, but uh, the guide wire went into the extra plug space. And once again, because of the bifurcation, extra plug is not good, re-entry is not a good idea here, and therefore this was time to convert uh, retrograde. Before doing that, we predilated the saphenous vein graft because it had a significant stenosis. And then we went retrograde with a microcatheter and uh, tried to wire from retrograde to, to true using a Gaia X3 guide wire, which has a 6 gram tip and is very torqueable. And as we can see, the wire uh, navigated through the occlusion and now it's going into the aorta. We were able to reposition the guide catheter, we pulled it back a little bit, and then we were eventually able to advance the retrograde guide wire inside the undergrade guide catheter, which makes things easier, so we did not have to actually um, use a snare. We externalized an R350 wire, and then we predilated. There is still uh, some stenosis, but then we decided to stand. And we'll come back to this because that was likely a little premature. We should have spent a little more time to prepare that lesion. So after standing, what we see is a suboptimal result. And this should have been expected to some degree because of the severe calcification. We also have some haziness in the ostium of the circumflex. Here's intravascular ultrasound. Once again, there is significant calcification. There is an oval shape of the vessel. And then uh, as we go close to the left main, again, there is significant uh, um, underexpansion. So what to do? This is a balloon and dilated lesion that is within a previous stem, and this is the current algorithm we use. The options are to do high-pressure balloon inflations with standard non-compliant or plaque modification balloons like the angioscalp, scoreflex, chocolate, or a cutting balloon, not high-pressure with a cutting balloon. And if that didn't work, which it didn't in our case, then we typically use as a first line intravascular lithotripsy. If it doesn't work, we use the very high pressure balloon, the SIS open balloon. If it doesn't work, we still have the option of laser with contrast. We have the option of doing atherectomy, which, however, will disrupt the stent. And actually, orbital atherectomy is contraindicated within first stents. If that doesn't work, we can go extra plaque and modify the lesion. And of course, if everything fails, bypass is an option. However, that's not really an option in patients who already have had previous bypass. And in all cases, intravascular imaging is critical to ensure that we have achieved an optimal result. So we did intravascular lithotripsy, 120 pulses, and the balloon seems to be better, but it was not perfectly expanded. So we ended, ended up using the open balloon at 45 atmospheres. Now we seem to have some better expansion of the vessel. 
So this is the angiogram afterwards, and we can see that we have a much better result in the left main with good flow into the ramus. However, the circumflex doesn't look that great. This is uh, intravascular ultrasound. We see that the stent uh, is better expanded than before. There's still some oval shape of the stent, which is not uncommon in patients who have heavily calcified lesions. But overall, the area of the stent is uh, good. However, the circumflex didn't look optimal, and we did uh, a physiology showing a DPR of 0.34 with a focal step up at the ostium. So whether it was because of the stand or whether it was because of the extra plaque wire crossing, we do have significant disease in the ostium of the circumflex that does require treatment. Now, delivering equipment there was extremely challenging. So we used a Sasuke dual lumen to advance a guide wire into the circumflex and then uh, predilated, but had significant equipment delivering any equipment into the circumflex through the calcium and the previous stand. So we used the inch warming technique, small balloon inflated, deflated, and the guide extension is advanced during deflation of the balloon, and we're able to get the balloon into the circumflex. And then we were able to deliver the stand inside the circumflex without having issues uh, proximally. And then we deployed the stand, essentially in a culotte fashion. You have the proximal part inside the left main and the distal part into the circumflex. We then rewired into the LAD and then performed a kissing balloon inflation with a nice result. We then... Uh, decided to close the graft because we had ballooned and now we had a significant flow. And there are two ways to close the graft. One is to use an unplatzer vascular plug, which is what we tried here. The unplatzer plug is loaded inside a guide extension. The guide extension is advanced to the target part of the vein graft we want to close. And then what happens is we unsheath, we pull back the guide extension. And then what this does is uh, expands, lets the unplatzer vascular plug expand. There was still some flow, quite a bit of flow actually in the south venous vein graft, and that is why we ended up using a packing coil, a penumbra packing coil, that uh, su successfully occluded the south venous vein graft. And this was the final result. Again, it's not perfect. There is still a not perfect expansion in the distal left main, but the proximal circumflex looks much better. There's good flow. There's good flow also into the rames. Several lessons from this case. The first one is like a case 248. In case of uh, vein graft failure, especially recurrent vein graft failure, then treating the native vessel is preferred. In heavily calcified vessels, and previous bypass patients with CTOs is a prime example, required excellent vessel preparation. When we placed our initial stand from the left main into the ramus, we did not prepare the vessel well enough, and that is why we had stand under expansion, and we had to do a lot of maneuvers to help expand it more. And although atherectomy, it's much easier done before we place the stand, after the stand in play is placed, if there is still stand under expansion, what we typically start with is intravascular lithotripsy, followed by the very high pressure balloon, and we reserve laser with contrast or atherectomy for later on if those two modalities are unsuccessful. In this case, we had a bifurcation of the ramus and the circumflex, and after standing into the ramus, the circumflex ostium was compromised. But because calcium can make assessment of uh, lesions difficult, we did coronary physiology that confirmed a very high-grade lesion with a DPR, which is similar to the IFR, of 0.34. And as a result, we stand it into the circumflex using a culotte fashion. And finally, because there was a brisk flow at the end of the procedure in the vein graft, we did occlude it using a combination of an unplatzer vascular plug as well as a biking coil. Thank you.